Good evening. Try again. Good evening. Good evening. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Even we're a day early. I do want to share this because it goes along so well with what we talked about last week in terms on Sunday of uh, stewardship and what we're celebrating tomorrow with Thanksgiving. This is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse, beginning with verse 10. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in everything for all liberality, which through us is producing thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only fully supplying the needs of the saints, but is also supplying through many thanksgivings to God. Amen. As we get started this morning, and well, or morning, this evening, and welcome, it's good to have you here. Um, we're going to take a benevolent fund offering tonight that goes for the benevolent fund that we operate within our, our own congregation when people have needs. And so if you want to participate in that, you just make a check out to the church or you can put in the cash, however you want to do it. But we'll be doing that during the second song. But at this time, I'm going to ask if you would stand as we begin the service by singing together, We Bring the Sacrifice of Praise. And um, we'll take uh, the offering during the next song, but let's pray together. Father, we do come to bring the sacrifices of praise. We come to, to say thank you for our life. Thank you for the provision of life, Lord, whether it's, whether it's life and heartbeat and health or whether it's finances or home and clothing and food or special things like family and our salvation. We give you thanks and praise. Thank you that we can also give back to others and help others when they're going through difficult times with things like the Benevolent Fund. So we just pray, God, that you will be blessed as we worship you in the giving of this special gift and as we continue to give worship to you in song. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail-pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and your grace. Worthy is the Lamb, seated on the throne. like to share a uh, scripture with you. Tonight we have uh, two special guests that are our very own that are going to come and just give testimony of praise and thanksgiving to the Lord Jesus Christ and we get to listen in on what God's been doing in their life. But before they do let me just share this with you. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom teaching admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Amen. The first person we're going to hear from is Loretta, and I'm going to ask her to come up at this time, and later on we'll get to hear from our friend John Nyland. <laughs> this is so far I'm okay <laughs> this is my prayer journal um, a few years ago uh, a friend of mine gave me a, a journal and a book called 1000 Gifts um, and I started writing I started writing in the journal um, hoping that I could write a thousand blessings in one year. Um, I needed two more months, and I got that. Um, I've slowed down quite a bit, but I've been writing, and I just keep on going. My prayer journal has become an intimate tool for me in my relationship with God. And as I sit in the evening and reflect on the day that God has given to me. Um, I reflect on the things that he has poured into that day as blessings. And I write them down. And in just a little bit, I'm going to read to you from something from my journal. Um, I'm on my third one. <laughs> so, but first I would like to um, share with you a Thanksgiving from Re Renewed Life Storeroom, um, which you know is uh, 
um, an exchange of blessings in and of the congregation. It had been just, um, it had just been for the congregation until last September, um, or just this past September, we had opened it up for the congregation, or I'm sorry, for the um, community, and just one person came. But in October, um, over 20 people came, and I found myself alone with these 20 people. <laughs> Um, they had come in for the blessing of the storeroom. They had come in for the fellowship and for the um, coffee and, and muffins as well. And all of those things were important to them. And they did um, take away quite a few things. But I tried to get around to talking with all of them. And I missed a few, but I got most of them. Um, as I reflected on that later on, um, I realized that maybe more were coming <laughs> the next month. And so um, I also thought of how Jesus um, met the woman at the well. We call her the woman at the well. She was a Samaritan woman. And Jesus spoke with her. and. She was so intrigued by Jesus that she went off to the village, and she came, when she came back, she brought the villagers with her. Um, well, in the meantime, the disciples had come back from a different village where they went and got food, and um, Jesus had turned to them, and as the people were coming, the Samaritans were coming his way, he turned to his disciples and he said, um, the harvest is plentiful, and, and that's where he says the workers are few, but he said a few, few other things there too. And so I was reflecting on that, and I thought, the harvest came right down into our basement, <laughs> and I was there all by myself. <laughs> so I thought, well, this is really a chance for a, a blessing for the church to be involved in a ministry, a different ministry, than what we had been doing with the storeroom. And so um, I had, so I got pretty excited and the next morning was Sunday morning. And so I, I told several different people and I thought, hey, this goes right along um, with Alpha and people asking questions, people coming in for conversation and we could give them more, con um, deeper conversation as Jesus always did. Um, so Marcia sent out an um, email asking for help from all of you for this past weekend. And um, some of you came, and I appreciate that. And then I want to read to you from my journal um, what happened in this past weekend. In the very beginning of my journal, I always write, um, I am thankful for. That's how my sentence starts, um, how each blessing starts. And I also wanted to say that um, just in this particular writings, um, the, the cross is always a thanksgiving. It's, it's always, every day is a thanksgiving for all of us. But I don't mention the cross in, um, in these days um, that I'm going to read. And I just, want you, I just didn't want you to take offense at that, that I didn't mention the cross. November 16, and that was on Friday, 3991. <laughs> A loving church family. Storeroom day, balloons, cupcakes, shaped in six zero and birthday cards brought by many women it was fun 3992 obscured vision community people came a day early and first before any of the church people even even though the balloons and cupcakes were there i had a very different difficult time having the community people come what i felt was uninvited and people were bringing and other people were bringing donations and joyfully celebrating my birthday 
which was fun, the cards and people and conversation. I was distracted and unfocused, though. When I, when I got home, I was keyed up and tired, but also wanted to read God's word. I grabbed our daily bread, which I hadn't read for a while, and instead, excuse me, instead of reading Fridays, I read Thursdays, because the title fit me well, Dangerous Distractions. I read the scripture, John 13, 31 through 35, three times, and the reading twice, and still wasn't completely sure I was receiving what was intended for me. November 17, 39, Clarity. Normally, as I wake up and God's normally as I wake up, God is talking to me through a song or something, and today He was clearing things up for me, that He let me walk in the shoes of those that are daily confused and distracted. People may share a little of God's love with them, but their world is so full of distraction that they may not be hearing. Jesus said in the John 13 scripture that he was giving a new commandment to love as he loves me, which to me, that he loves me all of the time, and he has poured his love into my life. He repeats things often to me so that I believe what he's saying to me, and it works. I am thankful that Jesus loves you and me. Thank you very much. That's awesome. I'm going to ask you to stand as we sing a couple more songs before our next presenter. As Loretta ended with Give Thanks, that's what we're going to be singing. Jesus. 
say thanks for the things you have done for me, things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to Thee. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your songs. I'm going to ask John Nyland to come up at this point and share his testimony of thanksgiving and praise. Thank you. Unfortunately, he put a time limit on this, so <laughs> I thought I'd get hit in the head, but anyway, uh, thinking about uh, what we're thankful for and uh, putting things in perspective, I, I started thinking that, yes, we, I have a lot of things to be thankful for. We have a lot of things to be thankful for. And then I started thinking, you know, I should be thankful for what God let me do for him. And I'm going to start out with this. Have you ever had one person that changed your whole life? Now just hold on here. Well, I'll tell you what, I was finishing off my second year, uh, my second year of college, and uh, thinking about going on to Bemidji, and uh, Joel Lindacki's father-in-law was the guidance director there. And he says, hey, Nylon, come in here. And I came in, and he says, hey, I got a job for you. I said, what's that? He says, go up and work at Thistledew Camp with the delinquents up there for the summer as an intern. <laughs> the first thing I said is, do I have to write a term paper? <laughs> he said, no. He says, they want, to hire, they want somebody to hire for the summer so, and see if they could interest him in, uh, them in corrections. Well, I'll tell you what. Right then and there, that changed my life because I was working with those fellas up there and I found out that, yes, I can work with these people. And I could see how their lives had changed. And so 
uh, as I finished college, um, I was called one day. I was a caseworker my first year out of college, but uh, I would, my degree was in education. But they called me and wanted me to come up and start the ed program. So that was the beginning of 31 years that I can look back with, with many, many fond memories. Well, when I said uh, that one person that changed your life, well, uh, <laughs> being that we uh, had studied the story, I know that God was working upstairs and he was the one who worked through the Dr. Ortman. I can, that's the way I look at it now because uh, it, it's just like, yes, this is what he wanted me to do. And there was uh, many things that uh, I can uh, look at and are uh, very precious, but I wanted to think about one thing. First of all, Thistledo, we had a challenge program, and that was the last three weeks they were there. And we, we called it challenge. Uh, it's similar to Outward Bound, except that none of our kids ever died out in the wilderness. But <laughs> that's tongue in cheek. But they didn't. Anyway, um, so then each of the staff had to take turns going on these wilderness expeditions, and that would be one week long. So one year, uh, that particular year that I went to Isle Royale with the kids, uh, I had a Christian friend who, uh, he came up, he interviewed, and my boss wasn't much for religion, I, although I really respected him, but he said, hey, John, you got to come and see this. We got to hire this guy. And so I went and read it, and here he read, he's read that. And here it was his testimony about the most important thing in his life was that when he accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. Well, that man, we called him the six million dollar man because he was such a great athlete. He worked for me at first in the school, and then he went on to work with. Um, as a correctional officer, and he could have been a caseworker there too, but he did not want to do the paperwork. He wanted to be active in, in the lives of the kids, more active. But anyway, what we did is uh, we had a Bible study up there. We lived in camp for, Connie and I lived in camp with our family for about 10 years. And so we had a Bible study, and we had a group of 10 kids. Those kids graduated, staggered. Every three weeks would be a group graduating. So we worked with them, and then one day Gabe, that's my best friend, he came to me and says, Hey, John, what do you suppose Denny, my boss, would say if uh, we asked him if we could take the van and bring the uh, group, group of kids to the Lundstrom Crusade? And I said, Well, I'll go ask him. I went and asked him, and he said, hey, that's a good idea. I almost fell over. So uh, we took them to the Lund Lundstrom Crusade. And wouldn't you know, all 10 of them accepted Christ. And there was one in particular, and I've told a story to my Sunday school class, my smaller one, so, but I just love to tell it again. This guy was a bully. He was sophisticated, and at camp, uh, if somebody didn't do what he wanted him to do, he'd say, all right, you better not go to sleep tonight because you're dead meat. You know, we found this out. Well, anyway, <laughs> poor kids didn't stay awake all night long. When he accepted Christ, he was totally transformed. And not only that, um, when he left, he went into service, and he came back several times. And he made a point to come and see me. He said, John, do you still have your faith? I says, I sure do. He said, me too. Well, it uh, didn't end there. You know, uh, I had that group on trek on Isle Royal. And uh, that was really something because the <laughs> uh, the we had to watch out for the moose because they were having calves that year. And, you know, you, you they, they'd attack. But anyway, we were going through... Uh, one day, uh, it was a Sunday, and it was really raining, and we got to Little Todd Harbor, Harbor, and there's rocks about six feet high. It was almost like a wall around us, and we stopped there. And anyway, the kids wanted to have a church service. Well, it turned out that 
the day before I left on that trek, my, the intern that came to camp uh, came in the night before, so I met him, and here he was an atheist. And when he heard them say that, he said, we're not going to have a church service out here. And I looked him in the eye and I said, hey, if they want a church service, they're going to have a church service. Well, there we huddled. <laughs> And uh, one of the boys read the 23rd Psalm. And that really touched me. But you know, it wasn't over yet. Because um, well, then that day, I think it was that day, uh, we, it started raining. And it rained and rained. And we couldn't stop for dinner. It, we'd get just too soaked. So we kept on, and that was about 12 miles that day, and maybe more, but if you've ever been on Isle Royal, it's up and down, up and down. So when we got to our campsite, we were pretty well worn out. And so it was getting towards dusk, and, but it had quit raining, thankfully. And we were getting our tents ready, and one of the boys said, hey, John, come here, take a look. I went out there, and there was a beautiful cross hovering over the lake with the lights had made it into a very distinct shining cross. And I know that was a message from God. And uh, I know this. Those kids would never forget that. And I know something else. And I bet you a million dollars that nobody else ever went on Royal, Isle Royal and had that happen. So very thankful and very special. So, yes, when you think of all the things you're thankful for, I'm thankful that I can tell you that and that God used <laughs> Dr. Orban <laughs> and Denny and used me as his vessel to work with those kids. And he did the rest of it. The Holy Spirit led those kids to Christ. So thank you. Thanks, John. Appreciate it, brother. How can you be used for God? That's one of the great things, and some of this I've heard before, but it's just really great to... Uh, just to hear how God works in people's lives and um, we sometimes think our efforts aren't much and God takes the little and always makes it into the big so we praise God for that so I'm going to ask you if you would stand with us as we sing this final song actually once again think about Jesus sacrifice and why he did it he did it for our salvation but then he calls us to do the same thing to sacrifice our comforts so that we might be able to reach others for Christ. Let's sing together. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice. You became nothing, born after death. Many times I wondered at your gift of life.
the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. And once again I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you. Once again I pour out my life. And once again I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you. Once again I pour out my life. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the cross. Father, it's a symbol of our salvation. And on Thanksgiving, Lord Jesus, the cross could be the first letter of the word thanks. We praise your holy name that you love us so much that while we were still in our sins, Jesus, you came and you died for us. We thank you for the testimonies we've heard tonight of how you have blessed Loretta and John in their lifetime and what they've seen, what they've experienced, and that they could share that with us. Lord, all of us have stories of how you have amazed us by your power and used us in times that we maybe didn't even feel like we were capable of being used. As we celebrate tomorrow, this national holiday of our country, I just pray, Father, that we will begin the process by first and foremost attributing and recognizing that you are our God, that we have this privilege to be together as a family. We have this wonderful country that you have developed. We have, Heavenly Father, a great Christian home and Christian family and and Father that we are one in Christ globally help us tomorrow Father not only to enjoy the festivities of the holiday but to truly dwell on the glory of God and what we are so thankful to be a part of bless your holy name now and give each of these folks Lord a great day tomorrow if they're traveling give them uh, safe travels if their people are coming to their house Lord let it be just a very festive and fun time of memories. We just pray, God, these things in the marvelous name of God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for coming, and may you enjoy your Thanksgiving festivities. Go in God's peace.